An assumption is you're rich. <laughs> You have always been slim and fit. You're vanilla in bed. <laughs> Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm just chilling here on my couch in my PJs eating some salty popcorn. And I'm gonna answer your assumptions. Okay, so basically I asked you guys over on Instagram if you had any assumptions and so I'm just gonna answer those today. I thought it would just be fun, just like have some popcorn. It's almost like a PJ like slumber party kind of vibe. It's a Sunday, so I'm just chilling. Tim's like off playing golf right now. It's actually a really nice day. It's Sunday afternoon and I'm already in PJs. Still need to have a shower and do all of that stuff, but I've watched the first two episodes of Bridgerton and oh my gosh, I'm hooked. Or maybe I've watched three episodes today. I don't know. It's so good though. It's not as good as the first season so far. I think I just really like the two main characters in the first season, but it is good. But yeah, let's get into the assumptions. And I will need my phone for that. So I'm gonna go grab that. Just quickly, when in the cinema, do you ever like, obviously this is with your own popcorn box. If you're sharing popcorn with like a friend, it'd be a bit weird, but like, do you ever just do this? And then just pick it up with your tongue. <laughs> That's probably a red flag, but I do it. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so we have got the questions. I haven't even gone through these yet. I'm just gonna read them out. Oh, this is always so funny. I don't ever really know what to expect with these assumptions. Okay, so random selection. First assumption, you prefer sweet over savory. I'll go through them as I'm like reading them. Maybe we'll start at like chill and then we'll get to like the, the juicier questions as we go on. Okay, so yeah, you prefer sweet over savory. You are 100% accurate there. I have the biggest sweet tooth that it's honestly like a problem. I'm actually getting a little bit better, but for some reason, every single time I have a meal, whether that be breakfast, lunch, or dessert, I feel like something sweet afterwards. Not always breakfast, but with lunch and dessert, I have to have like something sweet to follow my savory meal. Does anyone else have that issue? Please comment below if you do, because it's a proper problem for me. Okay. You don't actually want a career in social media and you're feeling burnt out. In brackets, love you. Love you too. Um, no, I absolutely do want a career in social media. Like, I guess I kind of have one with the platforms that I've got at the moment. Obviously, YouTube's not that big, but I do feel that everyone that follows me on YouTube are from my Instagram, most likely. If you're not, let me know. I'd love to like talk to you guys in the comments. Yeah, I feel like everyone that follows me here on YouTube knows me quite like intimately. Like, I feel like this is more like a more like a personal chat. Like, it's just like a couple of friends in popcorn and wearing PJs and having a chat. You know what I mean? I'm gonna get popcorn everywhere and then Tim's gonna get mad at me. Anyway, so yeah, to answer that question, I do want a career in social media. I've never been burnt. I don't know. How do you know if you're burnt out? Like I've never been like medically enabled to do my job, which is I feel like the extreme version of burnt out. I definitely like have days where I'm like, oh, I can't do this anymore. Just like my really packed days, but I haven't hit burnout yet. <laughs> and I am trying not to hit burnout. So our ice maker makes like this crazy sound every couple minutes and I think that someone's behind me and I'm gonna get like, Stabbed or something. <laughs> anyway, okay, next one. You have always been slim and fit. <clears throat> Incorrect. I have not always been slim and fit. I hated sport. I freaking hated sport growing up. Oh my gosh. I did dance. I did like musical theater growing up. So I did not like sport at all. I actually said to mum today, cause we went and got lunch. I said, why didn't you put me in sport? Cause I'm quite tall. And I'm like, I could have like done basketball. I did play like a little bit of netball, but like I was never good at sport. Low key, my second cousin is Susie O'Neill and she's like an Olymp that's like an Olympics swimmer. She competed like in the 2000 Olympics, I think. But I can't swim to save my fucking life. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so no, I've not always been fit. And as for always being slim, definitely not the case either. My weight fluctuates all the time, to be honest with you. I've like kept myself fairly slim over the past like couple years, I guess, cause I'm, you know, into more of like a healthier active lifestyle, which generally means that you're a bit slimmer, I guess. But I was like chubby as a kid. I got bullied for being chubby in like grade four or five. So I've definitely not always been slim. Definitely not. I'll see if I can find a photo of me chubby and I'll put it in this frame. I say that as I just have popcorn in my mouth. Okay, next one. 
you don't care about the haters. No, to be honest, I really don't care. I feel like if you wanna have an online presence, you really have to have a thick skin when it comes to haters or like people giving you hate. I honestly couldn't care less most of the time. More makes me feel for them and that something must be happening in their life for them to feel like they have to lash out on someone else's content. If people comment hate comments, towards me, unless it really hits home, like it's something that I'm very insecure about, which it generally isn't, I won't care about it. Okay, moving on. Hmm, what's a good next question? You're with your partner because he looks like Devin Smith. Who is Devin Smith? I need to look that up right now. Oh, he's an AFL player. I don't watch AFL at all. Oh, I don't think he looks like Devin Smith at all. I don't think it looks like Devin Smith. I'll put the photos here for you guys to have a look. Do you think that they look alike? I don't think so. Anyway, moving on to the next question. Okay. You've had your heart broken before, Tim. Ooh, we're getting into the deep questions here. I'm also drinking an iced coffee. It's a very weird combo. I know. I just felt like I needed a little bit of energy to film this beer. Get me through the questions. I even thought about maybe doing like a cocktail, but I'm a little bit hungover if I'm 100% honest and that's not gonna go well. Anyway, I'm avoiding the question. So I definitely have had my heart broken before being with Tim. Not that Tim's broken my heart, we're together. <laughs> but together we're super happy. He is literally the nicest guy. And anyone that knows him, will tell you that he's just such an amazing person. But yes, I have definitely had my heart broken. Poor baby Beck, not baby Beck, like 19, 20 year old Beck. Fuck, she was an idiot. <laughs> I think that's my advice to any girl that's in that kind of age bracket. If a guy is causing you any stress or anxiety or hardship, you don't need that. You don't need that in your life, girl. You do not need that. Oh, it just gets me home. And I know it sounds stupid, like, and you're never gonna listen to someone else when they have an opinion, but I feel like I'm not even really talking about the question, I'm just rambling on. Yes, I have had my heart broken, not once, but twice. The first one, so awkward, maybe they'll watch this video, I don't think so, but the first one was, oh look, like I probably had crushes and then like had my feelings hurt like throughout high school and stuff, but the two actual like heartbreaks, I would say. First one was a guy that I wasn't, even dating <laughs> we were friends it was probably like a two year thing where we weren't actually dating but we were like we acted as if we were dating like i like was seeing his family i was really close with his um family and like i guess some of his friends as well like i would go and like stay at his house and it was never like there was just so many red flags and like it was only ever like best friends but we acted like we were in a relationship and he never made it official. And I just like hung around because obviously uh, like I had feelings and that was my first heartbreak. I can't believe I'm telling you guys, this is crazy. This is mental. The second one was a guy I dated and we dated for two and a bit years and he cheated on me. So that was a bit of a heartbreak experience, um, but definitely learned so many lessons. And also I feel like I was very superficial in what I wanted in a guy. Back then, I wanted like a specific, I'm gonna be 100% honest, I met both of those guys through Tinder. <laughs> and I have nothing against Tinder, but it's not the best way to meet people because it's not like you're meeting them off their personality. You're meeting them off like a, like you're like swiping right or left on a photo. It's like you're not actually getting to know their personality until you meet them. I'm gonna stop rambling, but yes, two heartbreaks, very happy now. And now you guys know all about it and awkward if they're watching the video. Sorry guys. <laughs> oh, moving on to the next question. Okay. Um, Tim earns more money than you slash is the breadwinner. That's so funny. Um, yeah, okay. So there's not much to the answer to this question except for, uh, no, I'm the breadwinner. Tim is not the breadwinner. I earn more than him. I've got two full-time jobs, so he's got one full-time job. I've got two, which is the social media and um, accounting job that you guys would know that I have. So yeah, I am the breadwinner in our relationship and people think that guys need to earn more money than girls do and they assume that in like most relationships that the guy must be the breadwinner. No hum, I'm a breadwinner. <laughs> like me saying this, Tim would not care at all. 
Moving on to the next question. An assumption is you're rich. <laughs> no, I like I'm not laughing because it's funny, but I don't know. Like, what's your definition of rich? Like, I did not come from any money. My family is not wealthy. Everything that I have, I've paid for. Obviously, like my mom has supported me growing up, helped me get my first car. I pay my way now. Tim didn't come from much money either. Like very kind of average. I don't really know how to answer that question, but. Hello, future Beck again. <laughs> I keep doing this. I'm looking at my answer to this assumption about the rich comment. And I guess after I filmed the video, I got a lot of assumptions that were saying that I come from money, that my parents were wealthy, that they support me. And it kind of just made me wanna speak a little bit further to this. Cause I think I say in this video that me and Tim's families were very like averaged with how much income that they earned. Like neither of us come from much money um, and all of that stuff. And that's true for Tim's family. I think that they were like an average income earning family. I can't really speak for him. For my family, we definitely had financial struggles, did not come from money by any means. And mum always supported us throughout like our childhood and like worked really hard to give us what we needed. She definitely struggled financially. She brought up four kids on her own. So it was definitely hard work for her. Yeah, definitely not wealthy. Don't have wealthy parents. If anything, if this is average and this is like poor, we were like in between those. But yeah, just wanted to clear that up. Back to the video. You make a lot from influencing. Yes, well not like, I don't know. It depends on your definition of a lot. It definitely is something that earns more money than your normal full-time job or your normal wage. And it ha generally, genuinely has been pretty consistent for me since I've started doing it. I can say that I definitely earn, I'll just say a lot more. Cause I, I don't really want to tell you guys how much I earn. I feel like that's a bit personal, but I definitely earn a lot more doing influencing than I do with my full-time job at a big four firm as a graduate role. So it's a lot more than that wage doing the influencer stuff. And that is all I will say. Oh my God, this person said you have size 12 feet bigger than Tim's. <laughs> oh. oh my God. If my friends are watching this, they will actually die. I'm not size 12, but I have really big feet. I'm not gonna show you my feet because I think that's weird. Look, I'm tall, I'm like 5'11". So, you, your girl has big feet, okay? She's got big feet, they're not size 12. They're about like a, I'm gonna say 10 and a half, they're probably an 11. Yeah, I've got big feet, they're bigger than Tim's. <laughs> but that is because she's like a, like a bit shorter than me. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, see this TikTok where I reveal the height difference of me and Tim. Which is another question that I get all the time. Are you taller than Tim? And it's like, who cares, dude? Like, honestly, I don't know. Okay, so I'm getting towards the end of this popcorn bowl, which means I'm gonna ask, I mean, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna answer one last assumption. Um, Someone asked me your, like their assumption, sorry. Is your vanilla in bed? <laughs> where I can talk about that on the internet. I don't think I'm gonna go into that much detail in this video. Maybe if this was like a cocktail instead of popcorn, potentially. There is a video that I wanna do and it's like that video that, um, it's that like say it or shot it. And I think I'll have to do that like with my friends, like pre-drinking maybe, and like ask like a pretty controversial question. And you either have to say the answer or you have to shot a drink. So I think that could be potentially entertaining. Maybe detrimental to me as a business person. <laughs> In my accountancy job, no, probably not. Probably wouldn't matter. If you guys wanna see it, let me know. <laughs> So I feel like this question was asked a lot, so I will answer it. So this one was about tracking. They say they assume that health bloggers would always track their macros and calories. That is not true, definitely not true. Like uh, definitely at some point of your life, if you're a health blogger, I'm sure you've tracked your macros and calories depending on like what type of health blogger you are. But just talking about me in general, I have tracked, I'm tracking now, I'm tracking my calories and macros at the moment, but I would never track for my whole life, if that makes sense. I would never make it a long term thing. I haven't properly tracked my calories in a long time. I guess I kind of know more or less what I'm consuming because I have tracked in the past. So kind of eyeballing it is easy for me. 
I obviously do the calories and the macros for the meals that I create for you guys over on my Instagram. And because I do that, I know how many calories are in those certain meals. But it just depends where you are, what season you're in in life. Depends what you're doing. You could be in a calorie surplus and you want to track to make sure you're getting enough calories to grow muscle. Or you could just be wanting to lose weight or you could just be wanting to, you know, educate yourself a bit more in macros or Whatever that may be, I feel like I'm really ranting at this point, but long story short, no, I do not uh, track my calories all the time. I do occasionally for like eight week periods. Okay guys, I will end that uh, little video off there. I hope it wasn't too boring. I know it was very chatty and a lot of my other videos, I'm like moving around and vlogging and stuff. I smashed that popcorn. Almost finished my coffee. Once again, weird combo, I know. But that is all. If you want to see any more videos on my channel, if you have any requests, let me know in the comments below. I hope you liked this video. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.